a hopeful woman moves into her new husband's mansion, unaware of the many horrors that await her for decades to come. One busy morning, Olivia arrives at the office where her father informs her that a business associate from Virginia will be joining them for dinner. The man mentions that the guest is a bachelor, causing the daughter to scoff at his futile attempt at matchmaking. That evening, the flustered woman takes a deep breath when she sees Malcolm Foxworth for the first time. Suddenly, the doorbell rings and the butler announces that Olivia's cousin, Amos, has arrived. During dinner, the guest compliments the woman for keeping such a lovely home. However, she corrects him and says she isn't merely a homemaker but a business partner to her father, impressing the man. Before he leaves, Malcolm asks if he may call her tomorrow, pleasantly surprising Olivia. The next day, the man invites the lady out for a walk and mentions that he made reservations at a restaurant for them that evening. At dinner, she asks about his family, and he says his father is enjoying retirement by traveling the world and his mother passed away when he was a boy. Days later, Olivia asks her father to sign a letter which she plans on sending to Malcolm's colleagues as a sneaky way of procuring information about him since she wants to know what she is getting herself into. However, despite the many doubts, the woman finds herself slowly developing feelings for the charming man. One evening, the father shows her a letter he received from one of Malcolm's colleagues, and they learn that his mother didn't die when he was a boy. Suddenly, the man arrives, and during a walk in the park, she admits that she knows his mother died recently, contrary to what he'd said. So Malcolm apologizes for misleading Olivia, but says that because his mother left when he was a boy, she was as good as dead to him. When he learned of her passing, he realized how lonely life is when spent alone. Then, he gets down on one knee and asks her to marry him, which she accepts. On the wedding day, Amos stops by the woman's room to give her his gift, a letter opener. Then, the father arrives and gives her her late mother's necklace. During the car ride to Foxworth Hall, Olivia suggests Venice for their honeymoon, and Malcolm hesitantly agrees, but only after she's acclimated to her new home. When they arrive, the woman meets the head housekeeper, Mrs. Steiner. Because the husband left her all alone by the entrance, Nella, a maid, takes the woman to her room. Later, Olivia excitedly waits for Malcolm to join her in bed so they can finally consummate the marriage, but he never comes. The next morning, the woman learns that her husband left early for work without telling her. Then, Mrs. Steiner shows her the tiny office and the library that Malcolm expects her to use when conducting Foxworth Hall's business. Because the older woman declines to take her on a tour of the property, reasoning that it's against the master's wishes, she asks Nella instead. In the east wing, Olivia spots a door with a lock on the outside and jokingly asks the maid if it's where they keep the misbehaved guests. Inside, she sees a smaller door, but when she tries to open it, Nella says Malcolm forbids them from doing so. However, the curious woman ventures into the attic and finds a portrait of her husband's mother, Corrine. After rats crawl all over her body, the terrified Olivia runs back down to the hallway and enters a room with a swan headboard on the bed. Suddenly, Malcolm appears and and admonishes his wife for entering the room. When he calms down, the man takes her back inside and recounts how he used to watch his mother put on her makeup by the vanity. In front of the mirror, the husband tells Olivia to remove her makeup, and when she does, calls her beautiful. The woman leans in to kiss Malcolm, but he backs away, appalled that she thought that was what he wanted, and then orders her to go to her room. The next day, the wife insists on planning the wedding party even though the husband assigned Mrs. Steiner for the task, much to the housekeeper's annoyance. Days later, Olivia dismisses the older woman from helping out with the party planning and asks for Nella's opinions instead. Insulted, Mrs. Steiner rushes outside to compose herself. Seconds later, she receives a telegram meant for Olivia, and when she reads the message, decides to tear and dispose of the paper. During the couple's dance at the party, Malcolm criticizes the choices she made, including her dress and the flowers for decoration. After the event, the distraught woman cries in bed. Suddenly, the man tells her to join him in his mother's room, so she sees secretly grabs the letter opener in case she needs to defend herself. He orders her to get on the bed and proceeds to take advantage of the helpless woman. During the despicable act, Olivia considers using the pointed object on Malcolm but chooses not to. The next day, she asks Nella to drive her to town so she can return home to her father. Just as they're about to depart, Amos arrives with the unfortunate news of her father's passing. He says she never responded to his telegrams, and she explains she never received any. Inside, the man states that her father died from new 
pneumonia. When she says she needs to come home to deal with the business, Amos reveals that her father was deep in debt and she has nothing left, save for some personal items. In her room, Olivia sees the dollhouse, one of the few belongings the cousin managed to save. While she sends Amos off, the woman instructs Nella to tell Mrs. Steiner that she'll pick up her mail from the post office from now on. For the next few weeks, she endures many nights of Malcolm taking advantage of her in his mother's room. One day, she tells her husband that she is pregnant, and to her surprise, the eager father-to-be believes it to be a girl, which he plans on naming after his mother. When she gives birth to a boy, Mal, the husband indifferently asks Dr. Curtis how soon they can try again for a girl. Eventually, she gives birth to her second child, Joel, disappointing her husband once again when he learns that it's a boy. Weeks later, the doctor informs the couple that Olivia is no longer able to bear more children. Then, the spiteful Malcolm blames his wife for denying him a daughter. Soon, the man's father, Garland, returns with his much younger pregnant wife, Alicia. During dinner, Mrs. Steiner watches somberly as the older man and his wife share a kiss. At the veranda, Alicia recounts their trip to Venice, and when she asks Olivia if she's ever been, she remembers how Malcolm never fulfilled his promise of travel. The happy couple says they'll sleep in the same room, surprising everyone else with the unusual practice. The next day, the pregnant woman tells Olivia that she doesn't plan on taking her role of mistress of the house and that all she'd like is her friendship. That evening, Olivia notices her husband's growing interest in his father's beautiful wife. Soon, Alicia gives birth to a baby boy, whom she and Garland name Christopher. A year later, Nella tells Olivia to look out for Alicia because she knows how much Malcolm enjoys beautiful women. Unbeknownst to the pair, Mrs. Steiner sees their interaction. One day, the man follows his father's wife and secretly watches her swim in the lake. That evening, the head housekeeper informs Olivia that her husband fired Nella. Suddenly, they hear a commotion in Garland and Alicia's room. When she opens the door, she sees the older man lifelessly sprawled out on the floor, his wife wailing by the body, and Malcolm quickly hiding a cut on his arm. As the coroner takes the body away, Dr. Curtis says he'll perform an autopsy to determine the cause of death. However, because she's suspicious of her husband's involvement, she asks the physician to forgo the procedure in exchange for a hefty donation to the hospital. Four months later, Mrs. Steiner places a flower on Garland's grave. Meanwhile, Alicia tells Olivia what happened that night. She says Malcolm wanted to take advantage of her, but Garland walked in and stopped him. The older man tried fighting back, but his son pinned him against the wall by his neck until he perished. Then, she adds that the attacks never stopped even after Garland's death, because Malcolm continued bringing her to his mother's room late at night and taking advantage of her. Olivia tells Alicia to run away and save herself since she has money from her late husband's inheritance. However, the woman says it's too late because she's pregnant with Malcolm's baby. Distraught, Olivia runs out of the house and cries. Then she heads to the kitchen, asks Mrs. Steiner for a knife, and lets her anger out by slicing a lamb's throat. Later, she stops by Nella's house and tells her to return to Foxworth Hall tomorrow morning. After Olivia leaves, the maid's daughter, Celia, asks her mother why she never told the woman about her. Nella says she didn't want to hurt her mistress because she is her friend. That evening, the furious Malcolm asks his wife why she moved her desk into his office. So Olivia mentions how he got his stepmother pregnant, but to her surprise, the giddy man says he believes it'll be a baby girl. The man suggests sending Alicia away for a year so no one suspects it's his baby because it'll be difficult to ascertain its real age. However, Olivia threatens to tell everyone that he killed his father if he doesn't agree to her plan. She says they'll make it appear as though his stepmother left for good, but they'll keep her in the locked room in the East Wing for the duration of her pregnancy. Then, the woman adds that she'll pretend to be with child so that once Alicia gives birth, everyone else will think it's their baby. Olivia emphasizes that Malcolm doubled his stepmother's inheritance and that he should set up $2 million trusts for their sons, so they may be free of his oppressive rule once they're of age. After the husband begrudgingly agrees to her demands, the woman returns to her room, places a pillow under her dress, and looks at herself in the mirror. Days later, Olivia informs the staff of her pregnancy and Alicia's departure. However, she says the woman's son, Christopher, will remain in the house until he can be sent for her. That night, the couple sneaks the stepmother back into the house and takes her to the room in the east wing. Inside, she assures the pregnant woman that she'll receive all the money from Garland's estate after giving birth, and promises to keep Malcolm away from her. In the man's office, Olivia reiterates that she holds the only key to Alicia's room and that he needs to stay away. Later, the woman hears a noise from the hallway, and she finds finds Christopher wandering around, so she asks the boy if he wants to sleep in her bed and he nods. Meanwhile, Malcolm menacingly watches his sleep
sleeping stepmother, revealing that he found a way inside the room. The next day, Olivia overhears Mrs. Steiner telling Nella about crying noises from the east wing, so the woman joins the pair and immediately fires the head housekeeper. That afternoon, she gives Nella Mrs. Steiner's old position and instructs her to tell the rest of the staff to stay away from the east wing. Then, the maid mentions that she found the secret door to the attic in the library open, surprising Olivia with the information about another path to Alicia's room. In the library, Nella opens the inconspicuous door, and the woman sees the scars on her face. Then, she grabs a pair of scissors and orders the maid to tell the carpenters to seal the entrance immediately. In the locked room, Olivia coerces Alicia into cutting her hair, reasoning that it's the only way to lessen Malcolm's attraction to her. That evening, the man finds his stepmother's curly locks on his desk. Meanwhile, Nella tells Celia about her suspicions regarding the mistress banning servants from the East Wing, so the daughter says to stay wary of the woman despite their friendship. The next day, Malcolm threatens to send his wife to a mental sanatorium on the basis of psychosis by pretending to be with child. However, she reminds him that she still has the upper hand because she knows he killed his father and took advantage of his stepmother. When Olivia picks up the phone to call the authorities, the furious man stabs her fake belly with a pair of scissors and says he'll always be in control even if she believes in the contrary. That evening, she follows Malcolm and sees him entering a brothel. Suddenly, a courtesan spots the woman's bump and asks if she needs Miss Hazel's services to get rid of it, but she says no. Weeks later, Alicia bangs on the window hoping to get Christopher's attention, especially after seeing the boy's growing affection for Olivia. That night, the stepmother accuses the woman of taking her children away from her, so she defiantly says she wants to leave. Olivia tries to stop her, but the pregnant woman runs out of the door. The wife calls out to her husband for help, but in the altercation, Alicia falls down the stairs. Later, the woman hands Dr. Curtis money inside an envelope, hoping for his discretion. The couple lies and says Garland's widow became mentally ill after his passing and found solace in the arms of one of the servants. When Alicia hysterically tells the doctor that they're keeping her prisoner, they ask the physician to inject medication to calm her down. Because she injured her ankle during the scuffle, Olivia has no choice but to involve Nella in the nefarious plan. Even though she's vehemently against it, the maid delivers the pregnant woman's food. She says Alicia needs to eat to take care of her baby because it's still her child no matter what the couple tells her. Then, Nella reveals that Malcolm is Celia's father, and reminds the woman that she is fortunate because she'll be able to escape Foxworth Hall in a few months, as long as she gives birth to a healthy baby. Soon, they hear Alicia's pained screams, so the man tells his wife to go to her room and drown out the cries by pretending she is giving birth as well. Eventually, Nella hands the baby girl to the couple, and Malcolm thanks his wife for successfully executing her plan, thus giving him his daughter, Corrine. The next day, Olivia thanks the maid for her help and their friendship. However, the employee says that if their friendship were real, she never would have asked her to participate in the wicked plan. Before she leaves, Alicia asks the woman to protect her daughter from Malcolm. Fifteen years later, during Corrine's birthday, Mal dances with his fiancée, Helen. Meanwhile, Joel and Olivia watch Malcolm dancing with a daughter. The son steps away from the party for a moment and sees Celia's son, Harry, polishing a car. Then, Mal appears and expresses his concern regarding being two years away from obtaining his trust and worrying he might not be able to provide for Helen in the meantime. After the event, Olivia thanks Nella for planning the party, but the maid responds glibly, implying that the women never salvaged their friendship. Then, Malcolm gifts Corrine a doll, surprising the teen with a childish present. Later, Mal opens up about his problem, but the sympathetic mother says the trusts are her husband's domain and he'll have to take it up with him. That evening, Olivia gives the daughter a pearl necklace, and the teen says she's thankful one parent no longer sees her as a child. Corrine asks why the woman married her father, well aware of their loveless marriage. So the mother explains that she thought he loved her, but life turned unexpectedly. So Olivia tells the teen to enjoy her life, but to make sure not to rush into anything. The next day, while wandering through the property, the woman happens upon the poison garden. In the library, she peruses through botany books, hoping to identify the plant she saw. Moments later, Olivia sees Malcolm watching their teen daughter as she drinks water from a hose. The next day, Corrine tells Joel to drive back home without her because she'll hang out with her crush. He takes the car to Harry for fixing, and when he hears the music playing on the gramophone, mentions he hasn't heard anything like it before. So Harry explains it's a blues record, and says he can borrow it if he wants to. 
Meanwhile, Malcolm shoots down Mal's request for access to his trust, displaying the cold treatment he has for his sons compared to Corrine. That afternoon, the father sees the motorcycle driving Rockford dropping the teen off in front of the house, so he forbids his daughter from dating anyone, and the upset teen runs out of the office. Then, Olivia admonishes him for needlessly tormenting Mal and treating Corrine like a child. She adds that she's seen how he looks at the teen, noting that it isn't the way a father should look at their daughter. He takes offense to her implication. So she explains that Corrine needs experience with men so she doesn't say yes to the first one who proposes, subtly inserting her own experience of making that mistake with Malcolm. That evening, Olivia tells the teen that she can go to the dance with Rockford and it'll be their secret. Weeks later, Corrine admits that she's pregnant, and the remorseful mother says she failed the daughter for not teaching her the ways of men sooner. So she takes the teen to the brothel for Miss Hazel to get rid of the baby. Unbeknownst to the pair, Malcolm followed them there and did what happened. The next day, the man confronts them and forbids the daughter from leaving the property. Olivia stands by her decision, but her husband says he'll find a way to make her regret what she did. Meanwhile, Joel thanks Harry for lending him the record because it inspired him to write new music. Suddenly, Celia appears and when she walks away, Joel says the man's mother doesn't like him very much. Harry states that the woman is his stepmother, and wonders how Joel ever thought she was since it's obvious that Celia's father is a white man. Later, the siblings smoke by the lake, and Mal asks his sister where she got the substance. The teen, who keeps the illegal substance inside a tin can, says she got it from a friend. Then, Joel mentions how he thinks Celia might be Malcolm's daughter. That evening, Mal threatens to tell his mother about the illegitimate child to blackmail his father into opening his trust. However, Malcolm counters his threat by forcing the son to tell Olivia what he found out. Mal refuses, but the vindictive man tells his wife that he's Celia's father father himself. In the living room, the son apologizes to his mother, but all she wants him to take away from the experience is to never be like his father and make sure he treats his wife and children with respect. Later, Olivia tells Nella that she knows who Celia's father is, then expresses her deep regret for involving her in the situation with Alicia, because she never would have done so had she known what Malcolm did. Eventually, the maid accepts her apology and thinks 16 years is long enough to let bygones be bygones. Thus rekindling their friendship. Then, Olivia asks to apologize to Celia personally. The daughter accepts her hug but says she feels sorry for the woman because men like Malcolm never stop. At the house, the wife catches her husband watching Corrine undressing. The next day, she heads to the poison garden to pick berries from a plant. That evening, Malcolm suffers an attack after drinking from his glass. Later, Dr. Curtis tells Olivia that the man either had an allergic reaction or ingested a poison. When Corrine returns from a night out, the mother asks how she found the poison garden. At first, the teen feigns ignorance, but the woman says she found her stained gloves. So the daughter admits she didn't mean to give her father too much because she only wanted to put him out for a few hours so she could go to a party. Corrine begs Olivia not to tell anyone and the mother says it's the last Last time she'll keep her transgression a secret. The next day, Malcolm regains consciousness, and when the doctor says the likely explanation for his attack is poisoning, the man immediately suspects Mal. To take revenge on his son, the man drops by Helen's room as she prepares for the wedding. Then, he coerces the woman into kissing him by promising to open Mal's trust if she cooperates. Unfortunately, the son opens the door and witnesses everything. Incensed, he takes the tin can from Corrine's room, believing it contains substances for smoking. Then, as he drives off, his sister waves for him to stop because the ceremony is about to start. Mal tells the teen what he saw, but she spots the tin can on the seat and realizes her brother smoked the poisonous buds. Suddenly, the deadly substance causes the man to lose control of the vehicle, and they crash into a tree. Minutes later, the panicked Nella informs the parents of the accident. Olivia checks on Corrine, who tells her that Mal smoked the poison. When the mother checks on her son, she cries in anguish after realizing that he's perished. The family dealt with the grief in different ways. Joel in Harry's arms and Corrine destroying the dolls her father gave her. Malcolm blames Olivia for their son's death because she hid the poison garden from him and involved their daughter by keeping secrets. Distraught, the woman accepts the blame and believes Mal died because of her incessant need for control. Later, she douses the poison garden with gasoline and lights the plants on fire. Meanwhile, a car pulls into the driveway, and Alicia finally returns to Foxworth Hall after 16 years. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.